Today we're going to look at the world and not loving the world. We love the people in the world, but we don't run after the things in the world because when we run after things in the world, basically really, they're running after us. We're just noticing them and then we're taking the bait and running after them. And when we run after those things, they start to take hold of us and they start to destroy us because it's not us that's in control. It's the things of the world that are in control. You know, one of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. And these things, there is no law against. And these things protect us from running after the things of the world. And in 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15, it says this, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but from the world. The world is passing away, along with its desires. Whoever does the will of God remains forever. It goes on and it says, children, in this last hour, and just as you have heard, it's saying, children, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. So many Antichrists have come and appeared. This is how we know it's the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us, but their departure made it clear, none of them belonged to us. You, however, have the anointing of the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. And I have not written this because of you lack of knowledge of the truth, but because you have it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is not the one who denies, is it not the one that denies Jesus Christ? You, however, have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. I have not written to you because you lack the knowledge of the truth, but because you have it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar if it is not the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father, but whoever confesses the Son has the Father as well. You see, and it goes on to, to, to talk about Jesus is the Son of God and who believes in him has eternal life. If you want to listen to a video on eternal life, there's one on my channel. So what is it in the world that takes hold of us? Well, it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the stuff that's just going, hello, look at me, I'm over here. And you go, oh, that's nice, isn't it? I like that. I think I'll save all my money up for that and I'll get it. You know, some people that get a fast car, but the fast car's trying to kill them. It's fine having a car, it's fine having a car that goes fast and with a big engine. I've had big engines. I've had 2.5, 3.5 engines. You know, but the thing is, I never drove them fast. <laughs> I, I remember having a car once and I sold it to a friend. And I thought, well, is it me? There's something not right with this car. Anyway, he came back three months later to me and he said, do you know what, Pete? That car, I've sold it. I said, why have you sold it? He said, because it keeps on trying to kill me. 
And I said, well, that's what I thought, but I thought I was just thinking that, but it made me do stupid things. It made me go out into the road when I shouldn't go out into the road. He said, that's what was happening to me. I was doing wrong things with it and I've never had a car like it in my life. I said, me neither. And I've never had a car like it since. It was almost like it was possessed and it was trying to kill me. Not because of speed and my lack of judgment and thinking that I won't die if I go really fast round the corner and the car will just stay there. No. You know, many of us have had crashes. But you see, the lust of speed, it will try and kill you in the end. The lust of a woman. When you're married, it will try and kill you in the end. Its whole point is to try and kill you. You see, our eyes, they never have enough. There's a piece of scripture in the Bible where it says, the eyes never have enough. The ears never have enough. You can't hear enough stuff. People that are consumed with gossip, they can't get enough. They can't stop the mouth from talking, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why does it speak? Because it's got all this stuff going through the eyes, all this stuff going through the ears, and it goes into the heart, it goes into your mind first, into your heart, you take it into your heart, and then you spew it out of your mouth. You know, how many times have us said things that we didn't really want to say, but it was in our heart. And this is what happens. But, you know, when I was young, which obviously I still am right, when I was young, very young, I always wanted to be a pop star, okay? And I was writing and all kinds of things happened to me. I had a being come in my room and talk to me and say, do you want to play the guitar or do you want to write? And I decided to write and that's why I write now, from that being coming in the room. But I write for Jesus and I write to glorify his name. Be that being from God or be it from Satan. But the stuff I was writing was not good. But when I gave my life to Jesus, because when I was 15, I hadn't given my life to Jesus. I believed in Jesus. I knew he existed, but I hadn't come into a relationship with Jesus. I'd not asked him to forgive me for my sins, for the things I'd done wrong walk with me and talk with me and show me his plans, not my plans, because my plans were to be a pop star. And the things of this world were just talking to me all day long, going in that direction. Because of the lust of it, the lust of fame, the lust of having money, the lust of being recognized, you know, sometimes people lust after being recognized because they feel they're not being recognized, so they lust after it. But that can kill you. You've got people like Kanye West on the television saying all kinds of things about people disappearing, people, things happening to people that aren't right. People sacrificing members in the family. These are the things that he's saying okay maybe i was you know delivered from all that because when i was young again <laughs> i'm not old i'm just saying when i was young when i was in my 20s early 20s i remember going into woolworths it was a department store and i saw a young girl with uh, a face my face on her white t-shirt as though it was like in a vision but i was my eyes were wide open and I, and I looked at this girl and I was like, whoa, my face is on her t-shirt. But I know it's not there, but it, it's there. And a voice said to me, you need to stop going in the direction you're going because you're not gonna have enough self-control to stop yourself from having the drugs you're gonna be offered and you could die. Well, that was as real to me as me talking to you now. And I remember going outside Woolworths, leaning against the wall and going, what was that? And that freaked me right out. And from that point, 
I started not going places. You know, I've been on the television doing poetry. Roughly the same time as people like Billy Bragg, uh, John Cooper Clark was just coming up, Pam Ayres was already doing poetry. And like I was looking like I was going to be maybe the fourth person coming up doing poetry on the television and representing young people. I was already on BBC Southwest and I was uh, on, on the um, radio. And so I was meeting people, I was getting into that scene, I was starting to meet producers of, uh, well, just producers and, and all kinds of different things of, of television programmes, you know? And so I've been on the BBC, I've been on BBC Radio, you know, I've been to the Lord High Sheriff of Cornwall's Garden Party, I was starting to meet people. But hey, when that word came to me and spoke to me, right, I was freaked out. And I started looking and I was agreeing with that word because I know what I was like because I was already on drugs and I was always already taking acid and magic mushrooms and, and grass and, and smoking stuff and, and all, all kind of, I was just like out of it anyway. So if I got a bit more out of it, I, I would have been dead now. There's no, there's no doubt about it. I would have been totally controlled by the media or I would have been dead, you know? and I would have been more messed up than I would have got along the way, as I was already then, you know? And so, because of the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the lust of the flesh, you know, your flesh will just keep wanting and wanting and wanting and wanting and trying to get to you. And it's just crying out and it wants more and it wants food. I mean, that's why we fast. We fast because we're saying to our body, we're saying to our flesh, no, you're not having any food. And it's going, yeah, but I want food. And if I don't get any food, I'm gonna have a tantrum, right? And I'm gonna start reacting and I'm gonna start getting angry and like, nasty and you know which some people do when they don't have food they start getting ratty i mean have you had children and like you don't feed them for a while because maybe you've gone somewhere or you're stuck somewhere or something's happened or the car's broken down or whatever it might be right and they've not eaten whoa they suddenly start reacting don't they <laughs> and, and you're thinking what's wrong with this child and it's because one either the lack of sleep or the lack of food. They're just reacting because that's what happened to our bodies. Our bodies start reacting and a child can't understand what's happening. But when we grow up, hopefully we realize, you know, and, uh, and, and we realize what's happening to us. And we think, oh, we need some food or all oh, right, the children need feeding, do you know what I mean? Because otherwise they're gonna give me a bad time. So, you know, the lust of the flesh is just wanting all the time. It, it's wanting that nice car, it's wanting those nice things in the house, it's wanting this, and there's nothing wrong with having nice things. And there's nothing wrong with making things easier for yourself. I understand all that. All I'm saying is, this flesh is always wanting. This mind is always receiving information of what it wants, because there's, there's the spirit, there's the soul and there's the body. Well, the body needs feeding. You know, the body wants sex. And it's built into a man to want sex. You know? And it's built into a woman, obviously, to want sex. You know? But this is how we make babies and this is how we go on. And this is how, you know, the earth multiplies. So there's some nice things and natural things that are built into us. But when it's sex out of marriage, then it can go wrong. You know, when these lusts come in and maybe we want uh, our husband or our wife to do something, um, you know, that, that we want, but they don't want. Or maybe we want, um, you know, we, we start looking elsewhere because things are breaking down in the marriage, which happens a lot and has happened to me, I don't mind saying, okay, you know, and things break down and people start looking for other people. Or they just get disinterested and you, you're in a place where you're thinking, well, the sex has gone and the love has gone and the peace has gone and your body's crying out for love. It's crying out for peace. 
Your spirit's crying out for love and crying out for peace. And all these things are affecting us all the time. We go out and, you know, we see things that people have and we think, why haven't we got these things? What's wrong with me? And then we can go on a downer. There's so many people depressed in the world. Why? Because they haven't got certain things. But it doesn't matter. You've got yourself. And if you give your life to Jesus, you've got God as well. And you know where you're going when you die. You're going to go to heaven in eternal life. Well, separation from God is eternal separation, is hell. And that's how some of us feel sometimes, hell. Because we're desiring the things of the world. That's what we want. We want the desires of the world. But it says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If, the, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is there that you can take with you when you die from this world? There's nothing. You pass it all on. You pass your house, you pass your car, you pass your television, you pass your carpets, you pass your chairs and your nice settees and, and all stuff like that. That is what you pass. You pass it all over. Or somebody comes in and just clears your house out, depending on when you die and what age you die and if you're on your own or if you've got family to pass it on to. You know, all these things that we accumulate that's of the world don't really benefit us that much. Okay, it's nice to have a nice chair and whatever and you can just sit in it. It's nice to have a big telly. It's nice to have a camera so you can do things like this. It's, you know, I need, I need equipment to do what I'm doing. But if I haven't got it, I just use what I've got, which is what I'm doing now. Just using what I've got and using wisdom to get things in a way so that they can, so that I can produce something that will last and hopefully change people's lives and give them understanding. You see, like I said before, we have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. And so, you know, our body is craving food, it's craving sex, it's craving all kinds of things, but our mind is part of our soul. And our mind is just going mad most of the time. It just wants stuff, unless you've got the peace of God which passes all understanding and keeps your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Because then you're not gonna have all the stuff piling in your mind and it's not gonna be nagging you and talking to you and saying you need this and you need that. And look at you, you're a failure because you haven't got this. You know, I never went to university. I went to college only because I went and did some engineering and I went for a, a day. To, or a half a day to look about car engines but can't remember a thing about car engines I can just about put the water in and the, and the, and the um, windscreen wiper fluid that's me done in cars even though I was looking at engines and being taught about engines because I forgot most of my life I think it was the drugs you know drugs don't do you any good they just like remove your memory you know and they mess you up and they stop you from functioning properly. So, you know, the lust of, of those things destroyed me. You know, I'm not the same person that I was. So I'm having to, like, rebuild myself. And some things is hard. I mean, I've just put porridge on for this morning to have something to eat, only because I was feeling a bit hungry. I don't normally have breakfast, but, you know, I put some porridge on this morning and then I had to bring the milk into the front room so that I would remember while I was watching something on YouTube that I'd put a pan on. Well, half an hour later when I noticed the pack, the, the four pints of milk in front of me in the front room, I, I got up and ran to the kitchen. Too late, pan's all burnt, it's soaking now. Do you know what I mean? Because that's what it's like. I'm so forgetful. It's just, it's sometimes, it's terrible. But this is what happens. The lust of wanting drugs, the lust of drinking two bottles of Merry Down Cider every day, which is a strong cider, the lust of sleeping about, the lust of, it just messes your head up. And yeah, you can give your life to Jesus 
and Jesus will come into your life and he will change you. I came off the drink, immediately I came off the drugs, immediately I came off smoking, three months later I came off sleeping about, after two mistakes and realizing what the heck am I doing? You know, because sometimes things take a little bit of time to kind of sink in and understand that, oh, hold on a minute, I'm not supposed to be doing this anymore because it's been a habit for I don't know how many years. You know, but now it's different. I'm a different person. But I still have to work hard at stuff. But yeah, I do have to bring in some milk, like if I'm on my own in the house. And, you know, there's nobody there to remind me like my wife, right? Because she'll remind me of everything. And it's a joke at church. I'm so forgetful, you know? But this is what happens because of the lust of the flesh. It destroyed me. But God is rebuilding me and it can rebuild you. You know, repentance is turning around from the things you used to do and going in a different direction. So those things are not in control of your flesh anymore. So going back onto your mind, your mind is working overtime most of the time. You know, your mind never has enough, does it? I mean, you get stupid sentences coming in your head, you're thinking, where did that come from? You know, you could be having pretend arguments with people because they've said something, but they're not even there. And then after time, they didn't even say all the stuff that you say in your head. You know, or is it just me? You know, do I need psychiatric help? I don't think so. I think everyone's the same, you know? And we have all these things happen to us. And if we take those things into a, you know, we're upset with somebody and we make it bigger than what it is. And then we take it down into our heart and then it comes out of our mouths. And then we cause even more trouble for ourselves because your body and your mind and your soul and your emotions, and they're all, they're all wanting stuff. They're wanting the lust of the world. That's what they're wanting. They want in the world, they want everything in the world. You know, what did um, Satan come and say to Jesus? He said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Well, they were already gods because God created the heavens and the earth, you know, and he created man. But how many of us get in bondage and how many people have sold their lives to the devil? for things and are they happy most of them know a lot of people commit suicide why because they haven't got all the things that they want or they've got all the things that they want but they've still got a, a massive gap in their lives and that gap can be filled with jesus and jesus will come into your life and he will fill you and he will change you I remember walking along a beach. I mean, I'm saying quite a few things about myself today, right? But I remember walking along a beach. The loneliness was incredible. Now, I love surfing and I would spend three to four hours in the water surfing. I would go down to the beach and just watch waves and didn't care if they were this big or like six or seven foot. It didn't make any difference. What made the difference was me being outside and on the beach and being by the sea and, and I love water anyway so I'm always around water as you probably noticed on a lot of my videos right I'm always outside and I'm always on water this is the first one I've done inside actually and I'm sat down and it's driving me a bit balmy because I can't seem to express myself and I just feel closed in so but I'm doing my best so this is my first one sat down like this I'm usually stood up I'm more expressive when I'm stood up Right, so, uh, you know, and a bit, I remember being on a beach and I was walking along this beach. And like I said, I don't remember much, but I do remember this because it was so lonely. The, the, I can't explain how lonely I felt. And maybe that's when I cried out to God properly, you know? But I was walking along this beach, there's nobody on the beach, the waves are crashing down. There's nobody surfing because the wind was on the shore and it messes all the waves up and it wasn't nice, it wasn't clean, but it was loud and they were banging and it was big and it was, but it was lonely. And that loneliness that I felt in that moment in time really stuck with me. 
And I can remember that loneliness now. It was horrific. I never felt so alone in all my life. And like I say, maybe then it was when I cried out to God. But I'd got a lot of friends. I knew a lot of people. I was going on the television. I was going on the radio. I was representing young people. I was starting to go somewhere. Everything that I'd always wanted and everything I'd always dreamed about. But I felt so lonely. Just me, on my own. No peace, no love, no joy, no hope. Well, the rest of my life in front of me. But when I gave my life to Jesus, I received peace that passes all understanding. I received a love that's so big that I can't get to the bottom of it because God's eternal. And so you can never get down to the bottom of where God is because he's so big and God is love. So you can't get to the bottom of love. You can always love more. You know, and, and knowing the truth sets you free, the Bible says. And it, I knew the truth. I knew that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. And so I received life. And from that point, I never looked back because I knew what it was to thrive and strive and, and run after the things of the world. And even though I wasn't that bothered about it, you know, in, in one respect, whereas like, you know, I, I had a mattress on the floor and I did have an altar in the front room, in, in my bedroom with all my stuff on that represented me. But I only realized that after three days of when I got saved, it was like an altar. You know, I painted the floorboards white. I was in a run down, drug ridden hotel. But it wasn't our hotel, it was just rooms for people that were messed up basically. You know, and that's where I lived. A mattress on the floor, that was it. I didn't have anything a fishing rod and a suitcase. But the, most of the clothes they had were on my back. And when I gave my life to Jesus, I just got rid of everything. And I just had the clothes on my back. A jumper, a t-shirt, a pair of trousers, a pair of boots, a pair of socks, a pair of underpants. And that was it. That's all I had. Didn't really have any money, didn't really have anything. I still had friends. And a lot of my friends gave their lives to Jesus because they saw the difference in me. Because I wasn't running after the things of the world anymore. I was running after the things of the kingdom of God. And they were stuck in the things of the world. But they wanted what I had. When I came out of church, like I say, I'll do my full testimony, you know, one day. But when, when I came out of church, people were asking me to give them the new drug I was on. Because they could see I was so different. Well, that's because I wasn't running after the world anymore or the things in the world. Even though they were still trying to get me and try to drag me down on a daily basis. Now I had the power within me to say, no, go away, I don't need you. Because the power of God had come into my life. And I'd received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was now teaching me instead of demons teaching me telling me things and, and talking to me. No, now the Holy Spirit was talking to me. And when the demons were saying things, like from the outside, because now I wasn't possessed by demons, but they'd gone, because God had just come in and smashed them straight out. But you know, when they were trying to talk to me, or when, you know, voices come into your head and they just say certain things, you know, you just say no. It might be as simple as, you know, look at that girl over there or look at that guy over there or, you know, well, it's nobody's. Look, it's just on a table. Just take it. You know, and I've said before, like, you know, I use this example quite a lot. It could be just a pencil, but it's not yours. It's somebody's pencil. And if you take that pencil, you, that's the same as stealing a car. There's no big sin or small sin. Sin is sin. You know? And so 
we sin. But Jesus can forgive you. And he's just waiting for us to ask him. So we ask him. And then the pencil's on the table again, in another place, in another room, in another house, or another office, or wherever. And you just go, nah, I don't need to take that. Because I'm not a thief anymore. I've stopped thieving, I've stopped stealing. I've stopped like looking at all the women. I've stopped looking at all the men. I've stopped sleeping behind my partner's back or my wife's back. You know, you start, you start to think different. You start to go to different places and people think, oh, what's wrong with Pete or what's wrong with Lucy or what's wrong with John or what's wrong with Mary or whatever. You know, and it's like, no, nothing wrong, actually. It's all becoming right because now I can see because, you know, the Bible says unless you're born again, you can't enter into the kingdom of God and you can't see the kingdom of God. And you ask Jesus to forgive you and he comes into your life and you can see all of a sudden you're thinking, whoa, where have I been? What have I been doing? I've been running after all these things. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh. I can't stop talking stupidity and rubbish and getting myself into trouble. You know, I, I used to look different to what I do now. You know, I used to have, have a Mohican and, and uh, you know, my hair all stuck up different colours and all kinds of things. And I used to say to people, what are you looking at? Because I was a bit aggressive. But inside I wasn't that aggressive. I was just messed up. And sometimes I'd have to run for my life because I couldn't keep this mouth shut. It was getting me into trouble. Why? Because a word would come into my mind, that guy's staring at you. He's still staring at you. Go and say something to him. And I'd go and say something, and what, what the, the demons and what the enemy was trying to do was get me in a fight. And then I'd have a fight. And then, and then I'd end up injured or end up injuring somebody else. But I didn't really want to do it. I didn't really want to be that person. You know, I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to be someone nice, actually. I wanted to be a different person to the person I'd become because I was messed up. And a lot of us are messed up and we don't want to be the person that we are. You know, one of the hardest things is to be yourself. Now, you can still be messed up and be yourself, okay? And on the process to being a better self, of yourself yeah just because you're messed up doesn't mean you're not being yourself there's a lot of people that look great on the television but they're not being themselves you know and if an actor is acting all the time how much is he being himself when he's acting he's not being himself at all he's acting or she's acting they're not being themselves so why do you want to act when you can be yourself, you want to act and not be yourself. And then you're struggling thinking, I don't know who I am. Well, that's because you're not being yourself and you're not being true to yourself. You know, maybe you're people pleasing, maybe you're a people pleaser and, and you're just basically thinking, do you know what? I don't mind anything for a quiet life. I'll just please everybody. But are you being yourself? How did those people know who you actually are. They don't know who you are because you're always being nice to them and polite to them, which is good to be nice and polite, I understand that right, but in the wrong way because they don't even know what your viewpoint is. You don't have to like be horrible to get your view over or what you actually think or what you would actually like. No, that's just being yourself. You know, if somebody Let's say, you know, I spend a lot of time with the African community and let's say they want, uh, you know, I meet some Nigerians and they make me okra. And I'm like, okra, <laughs> no thank you, I can't do it, right? You know, it's, it's kind of slimy and it's like, and I can't do it, right? Because it's not in my culture. I've not grown up with it. And to me, it's quite hard to eat that, or tribe. 
Right, I can't eat tripe. It makes me heave. Okay, and the smell of it makes me heave. But there's, there's lots of other things. You know, I used to sell sausages years ago. I still like sausages now and I've eaten like thousands and thousands and thousands of sausages because I used to eat about four or five a day, every day, apart from a Sunday because I was at church. Right, you know, and, and so there's things that we like and things that we don't like. So if somebody offers me that, I just say, I'm sorry, I can't eat it. Now I'm not being offensive, even if they think I'm being offensive, but because of the way I'm coming over, and they can understand I'm not an African, right? You know, I, I do a lot of African things because I'm married to an African. You know, and I'm around Africans a lot. And so, but I do what's English and I do what's African <laughs> because it's all part of my, my makeup now. Well, the thing is here is, you know, I'm not people pleasing. No, I'm just being myself. Do you know, I love eating with my hands. I don't know who invented a piece of metal sticking out from your hands and trying to eat it. I've always ate with my hands. Yes, I've ate with a knife and fork, but you know, if I'm out or like I go fishing or I go for a walk, give me a piece of cheese and a piece of bread and I'm happy. Bread and cheese all day. I'm happy. I don't even need any water. I'll just eat the bread and cheese and go for a six, ten mile walk. Because I love eating with my hands. There's something about it. It's like raw, do you know what I mean? It's just, you can taste the food better. So those sort of things are fine, but you're being yourself. I don't always go and eat with a knife and fork when I go to a restaurant or I go to somebody's house. And sometimes I will, if I think they're going to be offended. I remember going to um, a wedding one day and um, I think it was a Nigerian wedding and where there's about 10 of us all sat, round around, and sat on a round table. And I remember, like, I didn't think about it. I just started eating with my hands. And somebody said to me, are you eating with your hands? You're not using a knife and fork. And I went, no, I'm going to eat it with my hands. And you know, everyone on that table put the knives and forks down. They were all African. They put the knives and forks down and they started eating with their hands. And they totally changed because they were trying to be something that they weren't at a wedding. And something that they didn't really want to be because they really wanted to eat with their hands. But they were using a knife and fork because everybody else was. And then the white guy from England starts eating with his hands. <laughs> and they're like, whoa, let's eat with our hands. So everybody ate with their hands and we had a really good laugh and we had a really good time. And you see, don't be something that you're not. Be who you are. Yeah, your point of view might be different to someone else's. Well, that's your point of view. I mean, I would say Jesus is Lord. Somebody else might say Jesus is not Lord. That's their choice. For me, I believe I'm telling the truth that Jesus is Lord. I'm being myself. I'm not going to be something else when I'm with other people. I'm not going to be one person at church on a Sunday and the rest of the week people pleasing. No, I'm just going to be myself. Most people that know me will know that I'm just the same wherever I am. I speak the same wherever I am. I try and be as polite and as kind and as nice and as loving and as caring as I can. I try to help people when I can. You know, I just be myself. And so one of the hardest things to be is your authentic, real self. But it's powerful. And that's where power comes from being yourself. Obviously it comes from God, right? You know, God has given us the authority and the power to go out into the world and proclaim his name. But this is, you know, one of the keys is being yourself. 
did Jesus try to be somebody else? No, he didn't. He was just Jesus. If Jesus had tried to be somebody else than he was, he'd have probably sinned, right? Because he was a sinless human being, born of God. That's powerful. So Jesus was Jesus. And they put him on a cross for being himself. They put him on a cross for helping people, for healing people, for raising people from the dead and giving back their children or their wife or their husband, you know? Because to lose, lose a wife or a husband, be it through divorce or be it through death, it's horrific. You know, sometimes it's even more painful through divorce because that person's still living and maybe you still see them or you hear about them and you're trying to move on with your life. So we all go through things and we all have things happen to us. But we try to be ourselves. That is the best thing you can be is yourself. But you see, all these things, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, they're just crying to us. So we have a spirit that can be born again. The Bible says, unless you're born again, you can't see or enter the kingdom of God. We have our soul, which is our will and our emotions and our intellect. You know, our emotions can trick us. I won't go into all of that. That's in my book. If you want to buy a book that's got scripture in it and it's like a self-help book to help you grow in the things and being yourself, it's called The Tunnel. And you can buy that on Amazon. The Tunnel by Peter G. Kerr, right? And that's a great book. And I know I'm getting a lot of people saying to me, you know, that they've got a lot of healing through that. It says the world is passing away. Quite clear here. The world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. So to do the will of God, is to walk in his righteousness. And you have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus if you've given your life to Jesus. And he's teaching you his righteousness. And as we walk in his righteousness, it's a safeguard from the things of the world. The world is trying to pull you in one direction and God is saying, don't go in that direction. Repent, turn round and go in the other direction. Walk in the kingdom of God and you shall be saved. You shall be protected. You shall be favoured. You shall be healed. You shall be delivered. You shall be counselled by the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your counsellor, your teacher, your guide, your comforter. He leads you into all truth. He shows you the things that are yet to come. You see, it's great to walk with the Holy Spirit and listen to him, not the voices of the enemy coming in your ear, going in your heart, and then coming out of your mouth. That's just breathing violence and ugliness and sin. But no, listening to the Holy Spirit and then taking that into your heart and what's in your heart is coming out. How the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak and you will speak life, <clears throat> eternal life. Because when you speak life, it's eternal. But so is death when you speak death, it's eternal. Eternal separation from God, eternal life with God. What we speak goes into the air and it goes towards wherever we've sent it. You know, the Bible says about sending the word and God sends his word to heal. God sends his word and it accomplishes that which it's sent forth to do. You see, when God speaks, it always lands where it's meant to, suppose, where it's meant to land, where it's supposed to be. Because there was no point in God speaking unless he wanted man to be made in his image and woman to be made, made in the image of man. If he wanted the trees, he wanted the hills, he wanted the waters, 
he wanted the land, he, whatever he spoke into being, it became. Why? Because it was sent forth to accomplish something. And when it was sent forth to accomplish something, it accomplished that which it was sent forth to do. You know, if you have a, an idea and you go out to do something, you're not going out not to do it, you're going out to do it. Because you took hold of that idea, you took hold of that thing that you want to create. And you go out and you create it to the best of your ability. Sometimes we fail because we're not God. You know, what he says is true and it happens. You know, sometimes we say things and we don't get there. Why? Because we've got some insecurities or we've not got the skills and we need other people to help us get there. Whatever it might be. I'm not great at everything. I'm certainly not great at paperwork and I'm certainly not great at mending cars and I'm certainly not great at, well, I'm okay at decorating and stuff, but you know, like, I don't really enjoy decorating, but I can do it. You know, we do things that we can enjoy most of the time, if we can, because that's what we desire. God desired to be with man. He wanted to make man in his image so we could communicate with him. And so we do that by giving our lives to Jesus because it's sin that cut us off from God in the first place. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life. You know, because Adam and Eve sinned and we've been born from Adam and Eve. So we're born with these things, this natural desire to sin because we've been born in sin. But when we give our lives to Jesus and ask him to forgive us because he died on the cross and took our sins, the only one who could take sins, because he was himself and didn't try to be like everybody else that was sin, <laughs> sinners, right? And so, so we can give our sin to Jesus and he gives us a brand new life. And with that brand new life, we go forward and we help other people. And we tell them about Jesus and they come alive in Christ and they can see the kingdom of God. And so therefore they walk in the kingdom of God and they stop doing the things that the world was trying to make them do before. It's a process, everything's a process. But you need the initial forgiveness of sins. So you can communicate, communicate with God and be back right standing with him again. God's a great God. He's the only true God. And through Jesus Christ, he can be saved. He can be healed. He can be delivered from the darkness of this world and come into the light and receive the joy and the peace and the love of God. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, please like,